Hi everyone, today I have a really special guest speaker, Professor Sam Piazza. Hi everybody. And he's going to show us how to solve a differential equation by using Laplace transform and also a determinative coefficient. And he's also going to talk about why we shouldn't use variational parameters. Thank you so much for being on our channel. Hey, it's my pleasure. So all yours. Okay. All right, well, uh, those of you that know something about differential equations know that when you see a differential equation like this, it's non-homogeneous, it has initial conditions over here. Probably a good way to do this is by the Laplace transform method. It's a beautiful method. You don't have to worry about rectifying the constants at the end after you find a general solution. So I want to show you this particular example because I did this example in my class and I was promoting the wonders of the Laplace transform method and how great it is and so on. And we're going to go through this, and it is beautiful what happens here, but for those of you that know something about the Laplace transform method, sometimes you get involved in some messy algebra. So let's take a look at this problem. We want to find a y of t such that y double prime plus 4y prime plus 6y is equal to 1 plus e to the minus t. Initial conditions, y at 0 is equal to 0. y prime at 0 is equal to 0. You know, if you think of a, of a dynamic system, here your uh, position at time 0 is 0, and you have uh, uh, no initial velocity at time 0. Well, anyway, if you're going to use the Laplace transform method on this, take the Laplace transform of every term. The Laplace transform is a linear operator, so you can pull out the constants out in front. Remember the Laplace transform of the second derivative here is going to be s squared. We'll use capital Y at s for the Laplace transform of small y of t, minus s y at 0, minus y prime at 0. Then plus 4 times the Laplace transform of the first derivative. Notice how I put this in parentheses here. You've got to be careful. You've got to distribute the 4 in there. Laplace transform of y prime is going to be s cap y at s minus small y at zero, and then plus six times capital Y at s. The Laplace transform of one is s, and then plus the Laplace transform of e to the minus t. Since your uh, constant there is negative one, you know it's one over s minus that constant. So here the Laplace transform of e to the minus t is one over s plus one. The nice thing about the problem, and you're probably thinking that the solution should turn out to be somewhat easy since the initial conditions here are zero. So this is zero, this is zero, this is zero. You want to solve it for capital Y at S because you have to solve uh, for that, so then you can take the inverse Laplace transform of both sides. So notice if you keep on the left-hand side S squared cap Y at S, plus 4s cap y at s, and then plus 6 cap y at s. Factor out the capital Y at s. You have this polynomial here, s squared plus 4s plus 6, multiplied by that. Find a common denominator over, at the right, over on the right-hand side, which is s times s plus 1. After a little algebra, your numerator turns out to be 2s plus 1. All right, now you've got to divide both sides by s squared plus 4s plus 6. You get this. For you partial fraction fans, you're going to have a good time doing this one. <laughs> uh, you've got two linear factors. This is an irreducible quadratic. So notice the way we're going to break this up is you're going to have a constant over s plus another constant over s plus 1. This one, because it's an irreducible quadratic, we'll call it cs plus d in the numerator. I'll let you verify on your own, and if you need practice on this, this is a good one to practice on, to figure out the constants here. But when you do it, you get that a is 1 sixth, b is 1 third, c is negative 1 half, and d is negative 5 thirds. Now, I'm not too concerned about finding the inverse Laplace transforms of these two fractions because those are nice formulas here. This one, though, you're going to have to do some fixing up on. So anyway, if you take the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y at S, you know, that's just going to be small y at T. Now, I put the constants in here for these fractions. Now, over here, since that S squared plus 4S plus 6, since that's an irreducible quadratic, what you're going to have to do is complete the square on this part right here. 
So you know you have to rewrite that as s squared plus 4s plus 4. So that'll factor into s plus 2 quantity squared. So basically, if you rewrite the 6 as 4 plus 2, see now you'll have s squared plus 4s plus 4. We know how that factors. Then you have a dangling plus 2 there at the end. But we'll be able to deal with this. Now the issue here is going to be in the numerator because we know that the inverse Laplace transform of s minus a over s minus a quantity squared plus b squared, we know the inverse Laplace transform of that is e to the, e to the at cosine bt. So what I need, since I have an s plus 2 in the denominator, is I need an s plus 2 in the numerator. So, you know, that s squared plus 4s plus 4 plus 2 we know that factors into s plus 2 quantity squared plus 2. So you see, what that means is I need an s plus 2 in the numerator. Now, take a close look at the constants here, c and d. They're both negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative out in front there. That'll give me a positive 1 half s that I absolutely need in the numerator. Well you need an s plus 2 in parentheses in the numerator also. So you have to pull out the 1 half and then try to fix up the constant. So if you distribute the 1 half in here with the s plus 2 that you need in the numerator, you're going to have a 1 half s, but then 1 half times 2, that's 1. Well, you have a leftover positive 5 thirds up there. So 3 thirds plus 2 thirds, that's uh, five-thirds. So you already have the three-thirds here, so you need a plus two-thirds as this other constant over here. So again, you know, if you pull out the one-sixth, the inverse Laplace transform of one over s, that's just one. And then here, pull out the one-third inverse Laplace transform of one over s plus one, that's e to the minus t. Okay, now over here, I'm going to split this fraction up by term-wise division and pull out the one-half. So you see, now I've got everything matching up that I need. I rewrote the 2 on the bottom as the square root of 2 quantity squared, so you can see what the b needs to be. Here, when you pull out the 2 thirds, be careful, because my class today, they... They forgot about that other negative that's out there. So that's a negative two-thirds out in front. But you see now on this one, remember the inverse Laplace transform of b over s minus a quantity squared plus b squared is e to the at sine bt. So I need a b in the numerator. My b is root 2. So you need to multiply and divide by root 2 here. You know, it's not like doing integrals where you can let u be something and then take a differential. You have to kind of fix it up like this. We'll get to the final answer here. So here's the function that satisfies this differential equation with the initial conditions. It's y at t is equal to 1 sixth plus 1 third e to the minus t and then minus 1 half e to the minus 2t cosine root 2t and then after you rationalize this minus the square root of 2 over 3 e to the minus 2t sine root 2t. Beautiful method. Some partial fractions involved in there, but notice when you fix up the numerator here, you don't need to worry about the initial conditions. They're baked right in the solution. Whoa. Woohoo! And do we need a plus C? No. <laughs> we don't need a plus C. <laughs>